And I'll get, I'll get started on this. Right now, this is our technical overview of the Asegra Hybrid Cloud Backup Solution. And it's uh, a fairly compact, complex solution if you look at it to begin with. But I'm going to walk you through it today to show you how it all fits together. We'll end up right back at this same slide. Um, but when you first look at it, say, boy, that's, that's a lot of stuff. So let's just build out this slide. If you're going to provide remote office backup, you need a colo or in your data center, you need to have the DS system. Today that needs to be a physical 64-bit server that is available to run the DS system software. You need to have some type of online storage. A secret provides a disk-to-disk -disk backup solution. So you have to have this storage space to hold the data. It really doesn't matter if that's a very small environment. It could be internal to the server. It could be SAN. It could be NAS. But we do recommend that you purchase good quality hardware because our software is only as good as the underlying hard hardware. The operating system has to be a 64-bit OS, either Windows, Red Hat, or SUSE Linux. And once you've installed the DS system software on that server, and again, the DS system software in the centralized vault must go on a physical server. It will not load on a virtual machine. That's today. That may be changing in the future, but today it is a physical server. I will refer to the server, the storage, and the DS system software. That is the centralized vault. And that's kind of what you need before you can get started. Then you find an office that you want to back up. <coughs> and Zebra supports virtually backing up almost anything. Uh, you need to load the DS client software onto one machine at the remote site that you're going to be backing up. Or this could just be a LAN segment within your own data center. But you load the DS system software on some machine. That could be a virtual machine. It could be a workstation. It could be a server. Any machine that has enough available CPU resources during non-business hours, you can load the software. From that point, anything that the DS system software, it looks at the operating system, and the operating system can see, and we, we can log into, a secret can back up. So you must give it a domain admin ID in a Windows environment or a super user ID in, in a Unix environment. And we can back up virtually anything that's out there. All file systems, applications, uh, whatever you see, we have a client that will run on Windows, a client that will run on Mac, client that will run on Linux, and you back up the appropriate data with that particular DS client. You can actually, once you've installed the DS client, you can run a LAN storage discovery that will discover all the storage that's currently on the LAN, so you can decide what it is you want to back up, what you may not want to back up, because um, not everybody wants to back up everything. You may see a lot of workstations you don't want to back up. But what a Segra will do is you have to go and tell the DS client software these are the machines I want to back up, because it doesn't back up anything by default. The OS has to see it on the network tree. You choose it, the C drive, the D drive, system state, services database. And after you've done that, uh, what a Segra will do is it will do one full backup of everything that you told it to back up. Everything out there that you said back up, it backs up everything the first time. After that, the software will never back up data that doesn't change. It will do incremental backups forever after the initial backup is completed. Additionally, the DS client looks for duplicate files. If it finds a file that is the same as the file that's already been backed up, it doesn't back it up again. It just sends a pointer uh, to the original file. There's no reason for us to have 500 copies of Microsoft Office in a disk-to-disk -disk backup system we can all restore from the same copy that we've already backed up. Now, there could be different versions and different patches so we might have multiple versions of the files, but once we've got them, we've got them. Additionally, a seeker looks internally to every file that it backs up for repeating blocks. And if it finds repeating blocks in a file, it will only back those up one. So if you've got a 180-page PDF with a header and a footer on every page, or your logo on every page, it won't back that up multiple times. It'll back it up once. And after that, it will just send a pointer to that particular block. This, again, saves you on network bandwidth and disk storage space. So we are doing one full backup, incrementals forever, and this allows us to do the incrementals at the block level, not at the file level. If you have a 5 meg PowerPoint and change one slide, we'll see that that has changed. We don't back up 5 meg again. A secret will just back up 
the blocks that changed into that file. If you save, you know, one slide and resave that, we might back up 32K, 64K. All the blocks are compressed and encrypted at the DS client, at the remote site, prior to transmission. So if you've got everything configured, then you can actually run a statistical backup before you even make the network connection that pulls all the data that you told the backup, runs it in the DS client, dedupes it, compresses it, encrypts it, but pretty much just dumps it. Doesn't actually send it anywhere. And you ask, why would I want to do that? Well, the reason you might want to do that is it'll give you exactly how much raw data that you're trying to back up and protect, and then it'll tell you how much disk space and licensing capacity to plan for in the vault after deduplication and compression. So if you're satisfied with, you know, with those figures, you can just make the network connection and do your initial backup over the network if you would like to. However, one of the things that we have found, especially with people with large amounts of data or small WAN connections, is that pushing that initial push of data can be time-consuming. It can take days or even weeks in some cases to get the initial backup done over a WAN connection. So one of the things we recommend doing is getting removable media. And it could be a DLT tape drive. It's does a small uh, environment. It could be something as simple as an external SATA drive or USB drive. It could be something a little easier, like a you know a portable NAS device. You can buy a four terabyte NAS device, relatively inexpensive now today. But you do your initial backup to this removable media, and then you FedEx it or hand carry it over to the DS system and put it into the vault. And you basically see that initial backup using removable media. And that way you can get your initial backup done overnight or over a weekend versus possibly taking weeks. When it comes time to restore, if somebody wants to restore a single file, that can easily be done from the DS client over the network. But if somebody has to restore a large server over a small WAN connection and do a disaster recovery restore, then that might take a while. So uh, what you can do then is you can actually put in... Uh, removable media in reverse. You basically do your restore to, you know, a removable device, that exit or hand carry it to the DS client, plug it in, and do the restore from there. If you try to restore, say, a 100 gig exchange server over a T1 connection, it would likely take you more than about 10 days to do that over a T1, or you could just that exit there and do it very quickly from removable media. The data is encrypted and compressed on that removable media, so there's no security issues here. All the data that is transmitted from the remote site to the data center, the vault, it is encrypted. There's no need to have a VPN, for example. When you do your first backup, what you can probably expect as you start backing up is about a 1.5 to 1 data reduction ratio. If you've got 100 gig there at that site and you back it up, that'll probably take about 75 gigabytes in your vault. And the majority of that will be due to compression. Because that's just, you know, that's what we'll typically see is about a 1.5 to 1. But as you add customers and bring in more sites, what you'll find out is that more and more data is actually duplicate. I've already got the operating systems. I've already got the applications. I've already got the manuals that go with those applications. And you'll find out that quickly your data reduction ratios will rise to something